Many of you already know that fat and cholesterol are major cause of arteriosclerosis. But did you know that calcium also plays an important role here? When your doctor says you have arteriosclerosis, many patients switch to low-fat diet or start taking cholesterol medication. But we often forget about calcium. Today, I want to give 5 practical tips to reverse, prevent, and keep our blood vessel healthy. Ready? Let's go! First is the body weight and exercise. It might sound cliche, but hear me out. Let's say there is a 150 pound man who becomes uh, 170 pounds because he couldn't manage his weight well. To make it simple, I'd like to compare blood vessel to roads and sell to individual houses. Imagine the delivery man used to deliver 100 packages per day, but now he has to deliver 120 packages per day with the same resource. This would stress the delivery man, right? The same thing happens here. When we gain body weight, it means there are more tissues to cover and to ensure proper blood supply, the pressure needs to be stronger. So to simplify, when you gain more weight, you have a higher chance of developing high blood pressure. I'm talking about the increased possibilities. And that's why it's important to manage your body weight when you're younger and it's easier to control and it's especially crucial for elderly people. But if you're in your 60s or 70s and try to lose weight too quickly, that can be dangerous. So you need to consult with your doctor to set up a safe plan to lose weight. The purpose of exercise is to use muscles to promote better circulation. This is why I recommend exercise for both high blood pressure and low blood pressure patients. Second, when the blood vessels are damaged, they become hard, stiff, and narrow which cause circulation problem and increase blood pressure, right? So we need to find the cause of the damage. One of the most significant factor is oxidative stress. There are many types of oxidative stress, but I think homocysteine is the particularly important. Homocysteine is an amino acid that your body produces when it breaks down protein from the food you eat. When you have a higher level of a homocysteine in your blood, it can damage the vessel. So we need to address that. To reduce homocysteine in the blood, the vitamin B group are great. Specifically, B6, B9, B12, along with the zinc and magnesium. These are usually included in multivitamins, so make sure you're taking them. I also recommend three more types of supplement. The first is omega-3. You might think omega-3 doesn't directly reduce the blood pressure, and that's right, but it's excellent for repairing damaged vessel, so it can be very helpful. The second supplement is vitamin K2. This is very important because when vessels are stiff, it means that something hard is a building up there, often calcium. You have heard about kidney stone, right? The most common type of kidney stone is a calcium oxalate stone. Imagine this calcium building up in your blood vessel. How terrible would that be? Vitamin K2 helps uh, remove calcium from the vessel and put it into the bones which is especially important for elderly people. There's also a protein called Matrix GLA protein, and this MGP prevents calcium buildup in the vessel, and vitamin K2 activates this MGP. Additionally, in terms of expanding blood vessel, arginine can be a useful option. When there's a plaque buildup making the pathway narrow, expanding it up can be helpful. Arginine plays a crucial role in production of nitric oxide. One of the best food to support nitric oxide production is a beet. Beets are also great for men's health, so you might want to add um, beet powder to your daily routine. But I think this is an optional. The third is managing your glucose level. You might wonder why glucose is suddenly being mentioned, but in terms of circulating blood, clean, clear blood, obviously does a better job than sticky blood, right? Because this is such an easy concept, I'd like to share one more thing. There's something called glycocholics. As you see in the picture here, this hair-like cell coating is glycocholics. When you look inside the vessel with the microscope, you will find this hair-like coating. And the more you have, the healthier your vessels are. But when your glucose level is higher, this hair disappears, and it takes long time to recover. So basically, reducing glucose levels definitely helps circulation. Even if you don't have diabetes, 
it is important to lower glucose level for the sake of your blood vessel health. For example, in my case, after having a Coke, it took me about two hours for my glucose level to drop back to the 90s. But when I had a blood orange lemonade, it took me about three hours to return to normal. So I know that if I have to choose between this type of beverages, Coke is a better option for me. If you have access to glucose monitor, I strongly recommend experimenting with it to find out which foods cause the most spikes and how long it takes for your level to return to normal. The fourth one is what clinic can do for you. It's called chelation therapy. Once you take this IV fluid, the solution travels through your vessels and remove metal buildup, including calcium. You usually see changes in your blood pressure after about 10 to 20 sessions. This means the stiffness of your vessel decreases, making them softer and more flexible. So your heart doesn't need to pump as hard and therefore your blood pressure drops. This is a treatment from Western medicine and the last one is from Eastern medicine. In Eastern medicine, the concept of Myungmun or life gate is central to understanding the body's vital energy, what we call Qi, and overall health. Myungmun is associated with the kidney and considered the source of the body's vital warmth and energy. The degeneration or decline of Myungmun is believed to lead to various health issues, including the weakening of the blood vessel, which can impact cardiovascular health by affecting the body's ability to circulate blood efficiently. To address this, we use herbal formulation like Jingui Shengi Wan or Ugi Huan as a base formula and customize them for each patient. We also recommend practicing Qigong, Tai Chi, or meditation. Of course, lifestyle adjustment like stress management and adequate rest are very important to maintain the health of Myung Moon and the kidneys. Today, I have shared five tips for maintaining vascular health. Please remember these and consistently incorporating them into your daily routine. Also, do not think that high blood pressure is inevitable just because you are getting older. It is better to believe that with the right effort, you can lower your blood pressure. I'm not saying you should stop taking your blood pressure medication. Many patients with the hypertension ask if they can stop taking their medication and it's important to continue making effort to improve your vascular health even while on medication first. If your body reaches at the healthy state, you may then be able to reduce or stop the medication. I'm not suggesting that you do nothing and accept high blood pressure as a natural part of aging. It is crucial to understand that proactive effort can make a difference. Hope this video was helpful and remember, health is well, so invest in yourself. This is Dr. Sean, making health easy for you. See you next time.